Hi, Ermina Van Dyken, MD here. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people find optimum health through a whole food, plant-based diet. Today I want to talk to you about something that's very important to me, it's cancer. We all have loved ones that are touched by cancer. We all have people we know that have unfortunately passed away due to cancer. Cancer is common. And today I want to tell you something really exciting. I want to share with you 10 recommendations to prevent development of cancer. These come to us from the World Cancer Research Fund in conjunction with the AICR, which is the American Institute of Cancer Research. Together, they formed a panel of world experts, over 200 scientists from 17 different countries. They reviewed thousands of scientific studies as they pertain to cancer prevention of 17 of the most common cancers. They identified 500,000 studies and found 7,000 of those studies to be relevant. And an expert panel of 21 world-renowned scientists reviewed the findings and made judgments based on the evidence. This comprehensive review resulted in the setting of public health goals and personal recommendations for cancer prevention. Additionally, they came up with CUP, CUP, or Continuous Update Project. This is something that they update annually, so we get new updates on these guidelines every year. One in three of the most common cancers in the U.S. is linked to nutrition and physical activity, according to AICR estimates. Much of this risk is due to being overweight and being inactive or sedentary. And although there are a proportion of cancers that are genetic or inherited, the majority of cancers are not inherited, meaning they are what we call sporadic. They're random mutations. Cancer is, however, a disease of altered gene expression. And it originates in changes to the DNA, which is the carrier of our genetic information. For a cell to be transformed from normal to cancerous, it has to acquire different phenotypic characteristics that result from alterations to the genotype. Most cancers develop to the stage of being clinically identifiable only years or decades after the original DNA mutation occurs in that one DNA strand. So using numbers of new cases of cancer diagnosed annually from 2012 for both men and women combined translates to about 117,000 cases of cancer in the USA being preventable if everyone had a healthy weight. So here's the recommendations, here's the guidelines coming from AICR to keep us from developing cancer. Guideline number one, keep body weight low and within the healthy range. There's strong evidence that weight gain, being overweight, and being obese increases risk of 11 different cancers, including colon cancer or other bowel cancers, postmenopausal breast cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, endometrial cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer, gallbladder cancer, esophageal cancer, ovarian cancer, and stomach cancer. So we know that maintaining a healthy weight through a balanced diet and regular physical activity helps reduce the risk of developing these cancers. So the recommendation is to be as lean as possible without being underweight. Being overweight or obese increases the risk of some cancers. We also know that being overweight and obese increases the risk of conditions including high lipids or high cholesterol, hypertension and stroke, type 2 diabetes, and coronary heart disease. Heart disease, the number one killer of Americans. And key to this is starting early. If you're overweight or obese as a child or early in life, you're more likely to be overweight or obese in adulthood. So start early, eat healthy, and try to avoid being overweight. So directly from the AICR manuscript, they say maintenance of a healthy weight throughout life may be one of the most important ways to protect against cancer. On the topic of weight gain, you want to avoid especially that waist circumference weight gain. We all know it's easy to pack pounds on the waist. We want to avoid that there, especially throughout our adulthood. Recommendation number two, physical activity. You need to be physically active for at least 30 minutes every day and sit less throughout the day. So, you want to be moderately physically active, equivalent to brisk walking for at least 30 minutes a day. As your fitness improves, aim for 60 minutes or more of moderate or for 30 minutes or more of vigorous physical activity every day. You want to limit your sedentary habits such as watching television. You've heard the saying, sitting is the new smoking. Well, it is. Stop being sedentary. Recommendation number three. Avoid food and drinks that promote weight gain. So you want to avoid high calorie foods and sugary drinks. 
You want to limit your consumption of energy dense foods, which are foods that are high in fats and sugars and low in fiber, and you want to avoid sugary drinks. So, consume energy dense foods sparingly. An energy dense food, in case you were wondering, is defined as a food with an energy content of more than about 275 kilocalories per 100 grams. You also want to limit your processed energy dense foods. Relatively unprocessed energy dense foods, such as nuts and seeds, they've not been shown to contribute to weight gain when consumed as part of a typical diet, and these are oftentimes valuable sources of nutrients. So avoid sugary drinks, and when I say sugary drinks, I principally mean drinks with added sugars. Sodas, Gatorade, fruit juices to a certain extent should also be limited. Because of their water content, drinks are less energy dense than foods. However, sugary drinks provide energy but do not seem to make you full. And as a result, you don't reduce your subsequent energy intake, so you are over consuming all these calories and energy and you're gonna gain weight as a result. Fast food. You wanna consume fast food sparingly, if at all. So fast food, I mean, that's the readily available convenience foods that tend to be energy dense and consumed frequently and in large portions in the United States and in the developed world. Supersized portions. Recommendation number four, eat plants. Eat more grains, eat fruits, eat vegetables, eat legumes such as beans. You want to eat at least five portions or five servings of a variety of vegetables and fruits every day. So by serving, we're looking at like 400 grams or 14 ounces. This is best made up from a range of various things, like I said. You want vegetables and fruits that are tons of different colors. You want red, you want green, you want yellow, you want white, you want purple, you want orange, you want tomato-based products like tomato sauce, cooked tomatoes, you want allium vegetables such as garlic, onions, super healthy for you. In other words, eat the rainbow. You want to eat relatively unprocessed cereals or pulses, which are legumes, with every meal if you can. These relatively unprocessed grains and legumes, they contribute to an average of at least 25 grams of non-starch polysaccharides daily, which means these foods are low in energy density and so they promote a healthy weight. Lastly, you want to limit refined starchy foods, so you want to limit the white bread, the wonder bread, things that are not whole grain, those processed crackers, etc. Limit those. Recommendation number five, avoid animal foods. You want to limit your red meat and processed meat. So by red meat, I'm referring to beef, pork, lamb, goat, uh, all of that. And processed meat as well. So when I'm talking about processed meat, we're talking about meat that's preserved by smoking, curing, salting, adding chemicals, preservatives. That's the processed meats you want to avoid. Recommendation number six, avoid alcoholic drinks. So for cancer prevention, it's best not to drink alcohol. If you do, you want to limit alcoholic drinks and follow national guidelines. So in the United States, that would be two drinks for a man every day and one for a woman every day. The evidence doesn't show that there's a safe level of consumption of alcoholic drinks below which there's no risk of cancer. This means that based solely on the evidence on cancer, even small amounts of alcoholic drinks should be avoided. But you have to take into account that in framing the recommendation here, the panel also took into account the evidence that modest amounts of alcoholic drinks are likely to protect against coronary heart disease. Recommendation number seven, avoid preserved processed food. Eat less salt, and you want to avoid moldy grains and legumes. So we'll talk about the salt first. You want to avoid salt preserved, salted or salty foods, any food that's preserved with the method of using salt. So methods of preservation that are good or do not use salt include refrigeration, freezing, drying, bottling, canning, and fermentation. By the way, fermentation is really good for your microbiome too, right? And you want to limit consumption of processed foods that have added salt in them. So things with added salt you want to limit to 2.4 grams of sodium a day. We know that salt is necessary for human health and for life itself, but at levels very much lower than typically consumed in most parts of the world. 
Contamination of cereals and pulses or legumes with aflatoxin, which is produced by sun molds when such foods are stored in too long of a warm temperature, it's an important public health problem, and not only in tropical countries. These grains and legumes from the tropical countries that are stored in our moldy are shipped to us and we eat them and it's not good. So we know aflatoxins are a convincing cause of liver cancer. So avoid that if you can. Recommendation number eight, dietary supplements. You want to avoid them. So for cancer prevention, don't rely on supplements. Dietary supplements are not recommended for cancer prevention whatsoever. You want to try to meet your nutritional needs through diet alone. Yes, it's possible. Most of the time. It may not always be feasible if you are in a famine-like state. There, you know, if there's situations of illness or dietary inadequacy, you may have to have supplements. But other than that, we don't need supplements to prevent cancer. Get your nutrition from your diet. Recommendation number nine, breastfeeding. If you can, breastfeed your baby for six months. Breastfeeding protects both mother and child. And recommendation number 10, the last recommendation. This is for cancer survivors. So if you get cancer, after you are treated for cancer, the best advice is to follow cancer prevention recommendations. All those things that I just told you above. So all cancer survivors, you have to receive nutritional care from an appropriately trained professional, and that's important. This includes all cancer survivors before, during, and after cancer treatment. Now I have to talk about tobacco if I'm gonna talk about cancer. So tobacco causes 20% of all cancer deaths, an estimated of 1.2 million people in 2002 in the US died because of smoking. Worldwide, about 80% of all lung cancer cases in men are caused by smoking. So why is smoking cigarettes so bad for you? Well, we know cigarette smoke contains at least 80 known mutagenic carcinogens, including arsenic, cadmium, ammonia, formaldehyde, benzopyrene. All of these have separate mechanisms for causing cancer. So it's not only one chemical in that that causes cancer, it's over 80 of them causing cancer. Like for example, following metabolic activation, the activated derivative of benzopyrene, which is called benzopyrinodial epoxide, can form DNA addicts, <laughs> DNA addicts in lung epithelial cells, so it's super bad for you. We know it's a powerful carcinogen and it's also a source of oxidative stress. So those are my recommendations for cancer prevention, namely coming from the AICR, the American Institute of Cancer Research. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe to our channel and we'll get you some new videos on a regular basis. Aloha.